Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the show that you've been asking for. They've been sliding into my DMs left, right, and center. When are you boys going to put together a UFC Champions Prediction Show for 2024? Well, hold your horses because it's here. I'm Adam Cattrall. Pleasure to be with you. And it is a pleasure to be with these two. Even though I know full well, for the next 30 minutes or so, we're just going to be arguing, screaming like cat and dog at each other, and arguing who's won what and who did this. The one and only Mr. Nick Peters back, as is the Hall of Famer, Mr. Michael Bisping. Boys, are you ready? Are you Have you tuned the grey matter? Have you been thinking extensively about these weight categories of who will be holding those UFC golds when it comes to the end of 2024, Mike? No, I haven't, Adam, because it's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory, okay? If you know this sport inside and out, if you're not a casual, ah. you, can just, you can just look at the rankings and make a pick very easily. Now, you said, oh, arguing over who won yeah. last year. There is no argument. Nick and I came in joint first, okay? We, we were the, the winners. You my friend. lost. Do, 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 do. Take yes, it like a man, Adam. Keep on fighting till the end. Do, do. You're awfully chatty for the loser, pal. It's all yeah. say. This is what I love about you two, right? Because neither of you have actually ever won this outright. Whoa. You keep Whoa. sharing the mantle. Whoa. There's only one Hold guy on. Keep... on this show that has won this outright by himself. Keep... You need... So, Keep so hold on a minute. So technically, I'm still the champion because you two hold keep on. drawing with each other. Hold, hold on a minute. So what? by, by your logic, by the logic of mm. what you're saying right there, Tom Aspinall is not a champion. That's what you're saying. If me and Nick were champs, okay, we won. There's two winners, right? By no, your not. logic, what Tom you Aspinall can. achieves doesn't matter. The shame Join on you. R- riding around in his car, <laughs> going to the pub with him. <laughs> Right? Look at you. Look at you now, hey? Just wait. Just wait. Wait. I hold that thought, Mr. Bispin, oh, because I'm bringing that back up halfway through this program. Oh, All yeah. right? Go for it. So let's clarify the uh, results of 2023. I'm sure that we can obviously flash this up on screen to remind me that, yes, I did score less than these two gentlemen that are alongside me for this particular shot. We can see that we all got the woman's strawweight champion. We all predicted that Weili Zhang would still be holding UFC gold come the end of the year. And she was. Congratulations to us all. Let's stop there, shall we? No. Uh, next up, the only person that got the men's flyweight correct was our very own Mr. Nick Pete going for Alexandre Pantoja. See? You went Brandon well, Moreno. I went Matthias Well done, Glau. Nick. Well done. Thank you, well sir. done. I'm not going to take away from your accomplishments. I thought Thank that you, was buddy. a sensational pick. Very, sure very well articulated as well, I do believe. Yeah, real recognize is real. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, it's just okay, okay, mate. Okay, none of us got anything in the women's flyweight division. None of us got anything in the men's bantamweight division. And the women's bantamweight uh, champion, of course, uh, reneged her title. It is now vacant, so therefore none of us got that either. Into uh, the men's featherweight. Congratulations to you two. You both picked Alexander Volkanovsky. Both got it absolutely nailed on. I took a chance on a British fighter. I thought that... Oh, Arnold he took Allen a chance, might... Mike. He took a oh, chance, Mike. See, took a chance. He's, he's downplaying... <laughs> His failure by saying, "Well, you know, I, I was, I stuck I, with the Brits, you know." Well, I did. well, well, well. I, back, I, I back mean, my own. I mean, for a, I for my a own, guy mate. that I back my own. For a guy that holds this title in such esteem and high regard, it seems a very <laughs> haphazard approach. Now you're just <laughs> throwing it away and back in the Brits, okay? Which okay. one is it? <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, into the men's lightweight division. Congratulations to us all. We all picked Islam Makachev, and he was absolutely sensational last year with two victories over Alexander Volkanovsky. You two should have that strip because Volkanovsky did actually lose a fight. Anyway, we move into uh, the welterweight division. Who's the only one out of us that back Leon Edwards? Who's the only one? <laughs> this well guy! Done. Mate, well done, honestly. Well a broken done. clock is correct mm. twice a day, I believe. Mm. Correct. Correct. Correct, Amundo. Uh, middleweight, none of us got anything right there. Uh, Robert Whitaker obviously falling short to Drickers Duplessis, and I don't think any of us for sure. Just, uh, just on that Sean point, Strickland nobody the on the planet, not a single person watching yeah, this enough. video. Nobody's last got that January receipt. said Sean Strickland <laughs> will be UFC middleweight champion. <laughs> not even Sean Strickland's own family said it. Anyway. Fair play. Nobody's got the receipt for that. Uh, light heavyweight, we uh, all got that wrong. Only one person got the heavyweight champion right. Michael Bisping, congratulations. You predicted well that done, it Mike. would be John Jones. Well done. Well done. 
Pretty easy pick, let's be honest. Well, I, I think what happened was for the two years previous, I'd said John Jones, John Jones, and he'd failed to actually come back to the sport for two years consistently. And I thought, you know what? Maybe if I don't go John Jones, maybe you will come back. So you're welcome, everybody. So, so, you so again, a lesson, Nick. You yes. see the way mm. when Adam's wrong, he doesn't mm. accept it. And yeah, no, you've, you've just done the same thing as well. No, you no, just no. Did the same I, I thing. completely agree, Mike. Oh, all I will say is when we're about, we're about to announce our picks for the end of 2024 now, yeah. I've just got my fingers crossed that, Mike, that me and you are on the same page again because then I'll know my head's in the right space. You know, I'm not well, overthinking it. I pick, with, I pick with my brain, not with my heart. I'm not wishing upon a star. You've just told stars. us that you're going to wing it when you're looking at the, the rankings as we're going along the programme. I live and breathe this sport, Mr. Catchwell. I there live and breathe it. I don't need to study the data. I can just look at it and go, that's the champ. It's the kind of uncanny ability that I have. I mean, it is what it is. Call it a gift. Call it just who I am, you know? It's just what I do, baby. Okay. Exactly. Listen, 2023 finished uh, with me scoring three, Mr. Bispin scoring four, and Nick Pete scoring four. No outright winner, but those two set goal. Go on, you can have it. Right, Double let's goal. see if we can get an outright winner this year, shall we? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get stuck straight on into it. We're going to start with the women's straw weight prediction for 2024. Oh, I've just seen the little graphic that they're going to flick up on our screen. I'll go first. Do you want me to go first, boys, seeing as that I'm the sure. loser from last year? Yeah? One yeah. losing. Um... Listen, mine's not going to change from my prediction last year. I know that you're going to have a go at me for it, but I'm going to go for Zheng Wei Li. I think Zheng Wei Li might be even, at the end of this year, in the conversation, a proper conversation for the uh, female pound for pound, number one. We'll get to that at the back end of the show. Uh, I think that she's really coming into her own. Uh, obviously, in the build-up to this show, we've had it announced that she will be featured on UFC 300 against Yan Nan. Don't get me wrong, it's a tough fight, a very good fight. A uh, major fight uh, for Asian fight fans. But for me, Zheng Wei Li is a cut above everybody else in that division right now. She might even get an opportunity to step up in weight this year. But for now, I'm going to back her to be, at the end of the year, the straw weight queen. What do you think, Mr. Bispin? Um, I mean, listen, it's a very safe bet, isn't it? You know, let's just take <laughs> one of the best fighters. Let's take a woman that dominated. Robert there he Marinas, is. A woman that beat Joanna Young Jacek into mm. looking like an uh, an alien at some time. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, you, you're sitting on the fences. You're just going with the popular vote. No, she I'm not. I'm fighting. going with the best girl in the division. She will be. Yeah, well, well, we'll see about that, won't we? Because I will say something to the contrary. I believe she beats uh, Yan Zhao Nan at UFC 300. And what a fight that will be. An all Chinese affair. Yeah. But if we look at number three in the rankings, it's one Tatiana Suarez. I believe Tatiana Suarez has the ability to go on quite a run and be undefeated for quite some time in this division. And not only that, I will go one better. Tatiana Suarez at some point will be the strawweight champion this year. And at some point in the future, maybe they're not too far distant distant future, a two-weight division champion as well because she only oh. makes 115 by the skin of her teeth. My pick, if you didn't figure it out, is Tatiana Suarez. It's a great pick. Nick, right, yeah. you said that you're going to engage where you're at. I'm going... <laughs> no! Like, I've, seen <laughs> I've seen the graphic! I've seen the graphic! Come on. Say I'm it. Going with, just change that graphic, team. I'm Say going with it. Tatiana Suarez. Uh, no, oh. uh, listen, I... I know. I'm. I'm. I'm starting We've got a on the little back foot already. Here. I've. I've gone with. I've gone with Zhang Wiley, uh, and the reason being for everything you just said. I think right now she's potentially the pound for pound best female fighter on the planet. For what we've seen from her, she just gets better and better and better with every fight. We only had one performance in 2023, disappointingly back in August, but she was absolutely brilliant against Amanda Lemos. Now, Mike's right. Now it's kind of over to Tatiana Suarez, who fights Amanda Lemos later on in February. If she comes through that, then absolutely she should be cage side at UFC 300, waiting to face the winner of the All China Affair. And I think you're both kind of right. It will come down to one of those two girls with the belt. But I think Zhang at this point got that little bit more experience couple of home comforts as well. We could even see a defence back in Asia at the back end of the year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hate to say yeah. it, I'm going to go with Adam. I've got Jiang Wiley, champ you, end of 2024. You're going with Adam. You made your own independent pick and you're now realising it was wrong. I absolutely it was did. foolhardy. Correct. You, you, know, you didn't do your homework or your research. All you got to do is look at the UFC rankings and boom, it jumps off the page at you. As I say, one glance. One glance. Look at him. 
Look at him. Right, Maxi men's flyweights. Michael Bispin, you're up first, Mike. What do you reckon on the men's flyweight All division? Right. Okay, the men's flyweight division. Let me just look at the rankings here. Well, the champion right now is Alejandro Pantoja, and I think he'll still yeah. be the champion this time next year. I'm so impressed with him, the way he puts everything together. There's something about the man. I think he's truly special. I think it's kind of overdue that he was the champion, and I don't see anybody beating him anytime soon. He's already proven he can beat Brandon Moreno, um, Brandon Roy Val, Kai Car of France. I don't see any of those guys having what it takes this time next year. Alejandro Pantoja, the status quo will remain. There you go. Nick, where you at? Yeah, I've gone exactly the same way. You know, I've got some, you know, I've got an affinity with the guy now, having helped me to a joint first position last year. I think he looked outstanding <laughs> against Moreno. I'm like, Mike, I look down the rankings and I think, where is, where is the guy that's going to beat him? I'll tell you where he is. I'd like to believe it's Mo Mokiev. I'd like to believe that Mo Mokiev at some point will fight for and win UFC flyweight gold. He's just a little bit too far down the rankings right now in eighth position to be able to manoeuvre himself into a position. Pantoja's only fighting twice a year as champion. He's got nothing in the book scheduled for the first three months of the year, which mm -hmm. makes me think he'll only fight twice again next year. Mike's just listed off a bunch of guys there. One or two are fresh meat in terms of Pantoja. So I don't think Mo Mokayev's year is going to come in 2024. But this time next year, still undefeated. You better believe Mo Mokayev will be top of my list. But I'm Can going I with just Pantoja. say something here first, guys, before, Adam, you make your pick? Can you guys just make your picks and not have the caveats of, you know, explaining why your mates weren't your choices? Otherwise, this is going to take hours. <laughs> Listen, <we're> not, <laughs> Mokayev wasn't your pick. You just wasted three minutes of good time explaining why you didn't pick him because you're going to bump into <laughs> him. Stand by your decision. <laughs> Grow a pair. Be a it. man, okay? <laughs> Everyone doesn't that's get it. to be champion, and that's okay. That's true. It's very true. Um, well, I'm going to go contrary to what you two have both said there. You're right. Alexandre Pantoja was absolutely sensational last year. And I think he's in really good form. But I've got an obsession with guys that turn a certain edge in these lower weight divisions. And he hits a certain edge this year. Anybody that hits 35 struggles to defend and become champion between these weight divisions right up to 170 pounds. I honestly believe that Brandon Moreno will rematch Alexandre Pantoja uh, at some point this year. I'm going to back Brandon Moreno. I just think he'll do it. I've just got a thing inside me that, th that feels that he will get a rematch with Pantoja and he will overturn what happened last year. Because if you remember the first fight, boys, he was bloody, bloody close. Really, really close. And I think Brandon Moreno will come good and he'll be champion once again by the back end of this year. This time last year, you had a feeling about Mateus Nicolau when he got yeah, iced in his first fight back. Watch, Nic so. Watch Nicolau be champion now by the end of the yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, uh, we're into the women's uh, flyweight predictions for 2024. Nick, you start us off. Women's flyweights, let me see. Uh, right, so obviously we have currently got Alexa Grasso as the yeah. women's flyweight champion. We all unanimously 12 months ago said, Valentina Shevchenko, best female on the planet, not called Amanda Nunes. She will still be in this position. Alexa Grasso got into the back control and choked her out to claim that belt. Um, but even though I don't think it comes next, I think sometime in the next 12 months, Valentina Shevchenko will get an opportunity and will take an opportunity and will once more be the UFC flyweight champion. The bullet, my <laughs> favourite. Back on top. She's got 12 months to do it. I think she's slowing down and she's not my pick. Ooh. I think the whip, I think there will be a changing of the guard in this division. And I was flip-flopping as to where it was going to come from. The obvious fight is Man Manon Furo versus Aaron Blanchfield. It's going to come from that fight. So I'm going... And do you know something? I'm going to believe in miracles. I'm going to believe that the young kid can do it. My champion at the end of 2024, Aaron Blanchfield. That's what I'm going to back. What do you reckon, Mike? Manon Fioro is going to sidekick the head of Aaron Blanchfield just to Quite possibly. discredit that choice straight away. I will say this, in my glancing, I've only got one eye. I might have missed Manon Fioro. <laughs> I might have missed that one off the list. That is definitely a contender. Uh, when it comes to Shevchenko, it's a coin flip, isn't it? That second fight between Grasso and Shevchenko. I thought Shevchenko got it. Will she get an opportunity this year? If she does... Maybe she does it. Maybe she pulls it back, you know. But uh, I'm sticking with Alexa Grasso. I think she beats Aaron Blanchfield. Man of your all will be tough. I feel, yeah, whatever. I can justify it all day long. There's my pick. Deal with it. 
<laughs> I will. Nice. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Nice. Uh, okay, we move into uh, the men's bantamweight division, uh, and I'm up first. This is going to be good because I reckon that we've all gone for uh, different picks here. Um, I think. Oh man! Right, I don't think there's going to be a changing of the guard. I thought he was brilliant in his fight against the Aljamain Sterling last year to become champion. I know that there's yeah. going to be some tough tasks that are presented uh, to Sean O'Malley, one of which being Cheeto Vera. I know Cheeto's got a victory over him already, but I just think Sean is maturing into a fantastic martial artist. He's really embracing that superstardom. And I think that this year could be a year where we're talking at the end of the year whether Sean O'Malley is the fighter of the year. So I'm going to back him. Sean O'Malley to still be the champion by the back end of 2024. Mike. Boom, yeah. Um, it's a close fight. You know, uh, Cheeto Vera, I do believe, is my pick. I think he will become the champion. I I, I did forget about Corey Sandhagen because this fight's going to go down, what, yeah. March? It's going to go down in March. Yeah. Cheeto will defend the belt. The next man in line has got to be Corey Sandhagen. He has a very dominant victory over Marlon Cheeto Vera. I say this time next year, mm. Cheeto Vera is still the champion. He corrects the wrongs. He makes the tweaks necessary. And Jason Prillo sits him down and gets in his head. He's going to crap thunder and fart lightning, whatever that expression is. <laughs> That's uh, it. What is it? What does Mickey say? What does he say? <laughs> eat. He's got to eat thunder and crap lightning. That's what you've yeah. got to do, man. Uh, Cheeto Vera is my pick, although I'm, get, I'm second guessing it as I'm speaking. Okay. Yeah. Nick? Well, this time 12 months ago, me, both me and Mike went with Cheeto Vera, but I'm going to differ from Mike this time around. I'm not going to disagree that I believe Cheeto could well hold the belt at some point this year. But the one man in this division that has stood in the shadows behind his mates for mm. so long, letting his mate be the champion, letting his mate swan around with the belt, patiently waiting for his chance. Mirab Devashvili cannot be denied this year. He has to get a UFC opportunity in this bantamweight division. And when he does, whether it's Sandhagen or Cheeto or even Sean, they're getting ragdolled for 25 minutes. Mirab ends the year as champion. A good shout. Listen, three great picks there. That's such a competitive division. Uh, women's bantamweight prediction for 2024. Mike, you are up first. Yeah, look, listen, it goes down next week between Raquel Pennington and uh, Myra Bueno Silva. I think Bueno Silva wins that one. And the problem is, who's next, right? Juliana Pena. Does Bueno Silva beat Juliana Pena? That's really the only other competition I think that she's got. Yeah, there's Arene Aldana, there's Ketlin Vieira. I think this time next year, Myra Bueno Silva, Chi Tora, is still the champion after defeating Juliana Pena. Nick, what have you got? Uh, I'm going with a girl who, who just stole, as well as her opponents, everybody else's souls in December. You know, it's one of the most incredible performances. She threw more punches, more strikes than anybody in bantamweight history. She threw more leg kicks in 15 minutes than any female in bantamweight history. Irene Aldana made an absolute statement against Carol Rosa. And don't get me wrong, sometimes performances and nights and fights like that, you leave a little piece of yourself in the octagon. But I also believe that inspired by Alexa Grasso's year this year, I think Irene Aldana will be flying the flag for Mexico end of 2024 as the women's bantamweight champion. Yeah. I was I was uh, contemplating Aldana, but I don't think I don't know how many times this bantamweight championship will be defended this year. We're obviously getting one. Peña is going to be up next. And I'm backing Pennington to beat Bueno Silva. So I've gone uh, Raquel Pennington oh. and I think that she's good enough to beat Peña as well. So I'm going to go uh, you, I'm going to go Raquel Pennington. Yeah. Throwback. Nice. So we got Pennington. We got three different there you go. We've got three different uh, attitudes towards the Women's Bantamweight Championship. We're into the featherweights, gentlemen. woo Here we go. Featherweight straps on the line. Who went first? Is it you up first, Nick, this time? I'm up first this time. Go yeah. for it. And, you know, when I think about it now and I realise who picked them, starting to look down at last year's picks, both myself and Mike went with Alexander, uh, Alexander Volkanovsky. Obviously, that was proven absolutely true. Untouchable at featherweight, even though he dared to be great and, and fell short at lightweight. But that age thing that you keep whining on about and twittering down me in about, no man over 35 can defend the belt. No man over 35 is ever... No man alive! Ah. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I, I think at some point, as Mike said earlier, you know, Adam is right like a clock at least twice a year, and that could Correct. be the case here. And I think 
He's got a real test in Ilya Teporia. I'm a massive, massive fan of Ilya Teporia. I think he beats Volkanovski, causes the upset, maybe even has to do it a second time around. But I believe at the end of the year, Spain will have their first ever UFC champion. Ilya Teporia, champion 2024. You're going to be right, mate, because I picked the exact same guy. This oh, is his no. year this year. Ilya Teporia's year. I think that edge thing's going to catch up with Volkanovski. He's coming off the back of the Makachev uh, stoppage loss. Listen, Volk's a legend, an absolute legend, and he's going to give it everything that he's got, and it'll be a competitive fight. But I think Teporia might uh, come through this. He'll probably, like you say, have to do it again. And I'd even back Teporia if he was to get a Max Holloway as well as another defence. <sighs> Imagine year. that. Imagine to, beating Volk and Holloway in the same year. That's why year. I'm saying My I'm way. backing him maybe to be the fighter of the year. Wow. Ilya Tapura will be the featherweight champion come the end of 2024. Come so, you're not going to like this. Uh, Tapura versus Volkanovski goes down in February in Anaheim at the stadium right by my house. And I will be commentating that fight. And if I make a pick right oh. now, that is massively... Yeah. Unprofessional. It shows that I have a dog in oh, the face. It shows that I might be. Right. It shows that I might be a biased commentator. So simply because okay. of that, because of that, because if you check the records, I have a pick, but I don't want to. Yes, I don't you do. do that. I, I don't want to be unprofessional. I tell you what, we'll so do that because of that. I'll okay. throw in. No, no, no. It's okay. I'm willing to forego a point. No, no, no we'll save I'm it. To throw no, out, yeah. I'll throw out the wild card. Do you believe in your pick? Do you believe in I your believe original in my pick? Because if you do, we'll, we'll be put it out and we'll just save it at the end of the year. Yeah. It's the end of the year. Right. We'll be the champion Perfect. on the New Year's Eve you 2024. You know my pick. You don't have to okay. say it. Yeah. Okay. I know your pick because I can see it on my screen here. But you don't have to say it if you don't want to say it. I don't want to say it right now because it could be offensive to the other Okay. Guy. Fair enough. You know what that's I mean? Fair enough. I think, that's I think fair that's enough. fair enough. Yeah, of course. I mean, what a professional. There you yeah. go. There you go. Mature Cheaper stuff. Uh, am I, am I going to learn who this pick was before yeah, the I'll end say, of the I'll year? Yeah, I'll text it you in a minute. No. I'll text you. Okay, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, into the men's lightweight division. Um, listen, he was fantastic last year. Uh, and my, I picked him last year to be the champion. I'm picking him again it. this year to be the champion because if you're putting back-to-back -back victories like you're putting in last year, I looked down the weight category of the potential fights. He's already come out and said that it's going to be probably just in Gaethje first up in the middle of the year. We know that it's not going to be at the start of the year because of Ramadan and various things like that. But I just think he's too big, too strong and just too good at this moment in time for the majority of the division. Islam Makachev is my pick to be champion still at lightweight at the end of 2024. Mr. Bispin. Yeah, look, listen, it's an obvious choice. Of course it is. Uh, he's got some tough tests, though. I mean, Justin Gage is out there. I believe he'll very provide tough. him a very, very tough challenge, but I think Islam probably prevails. Then there's the winner of Saul Rukin and Oliveira. Again, tough fight. But if you just look at the man, mm. the way that he is, how he conducts himself, the way that he trains, and the way that he's still improving, yeah, Islam Makachev will still be the champion this time next year. Nick? Yeah, I'd love to go a different way. And I think all the names Mike's just mentioned there, all three of them have got a hell of a chance against them. But Islam climbed to the top of everyone's pound for pound list on merit. That second performance, especially against Volk, was something a bit special. And I believe it's going to take something incredibly special to take the belt away from him. So, yeah, I'm going Islam too. Uh, we're into the 170 division. Now, this is going to be interesting, boys, isn't it? This is going to be interesting. Let's see where yeah. you're at this year, shall we? Michael Bispin, who will be the champion at the end of 2024 at welterweight? Leon Edwards is the undisputed champion of the world. He will fight Bilal, remember the name Mohammed, and then we will all forget the name Mohammed. Uh, because I think Leon beats him again. I think he does it quite soundly. But who's next? Who's next? It could be Michael Venom Page if he gets through Kevin Holland. It could be Ian Machado Gary. If he stops whining on social media, joke Ian before you come for me. I'm kidding. Love your work. It could be Ian Gary, or it could be the dark horse. Why the reason why Nick is smiling right now? Shavkat Rachmanov. So I've got to, you know, got to give mm. this one a caveat. Of course, um, I think Leon has the ability to go out there and defend the belt and clean out the division. But Shavkat Rachmanov is a real issue. Other than Shavkat, I think Ian Leon cleans the deck. Simple as that. But Shavkat's a real ish. He's a real ish. What's your pick? What's your pick? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, I don't know. 
go did I say I said Leon we'll say Leon I think Shavka has a potential but does he go down this year so because of that I'll say Leon Rocky Edwards okay Nick this is gonna be okay. good this is gonna be good Nick come on son give it me <laughs> You know what, Mike's expression there and everything Mike's just detailed, that has been me for the last 48 hours considering this welterweight division because this is where, for me anyway, this is where I believe it could be won and lost this year. My decision right here, right now. Everything, every sinew of my body believes that Shavkat Rachmanov will be UFC champion. The trillion dollar question in this instance though is will he get a shot in 2024? And I don't believe he will. I believe Leon Edwards bottled it. will defend He's against Bilal. He's bottled it. He's bottled it. He will defend against Man. Bilal. And then he would defend... Shavkat is one of three or four who could get the shot. And don't Shavkat's get me wrong. Shavkat's getting it. I believe Shavkat's the only person that can beat Leon. But I will say this as well. <laughs> I, believe, I believe Leon Edwards is the only guy that could beat Shavkat. Look at you. That um, is... So, just, that just, out your just, just out of curiosity, if Leon beats Bilal, which we all expect him to, who, uh, you're saying he only fights once this year? Because if he doesn't, if he fights twice, twice. this year... No. He'll yeah, only yeah. fight so twice who, this so year. So who else is he, he going to be other than Shavka? Is he going to be Gilbert Burns? Is he going to be Colby Covington? Is he going to be Stephen Thompson or Sean Brady? No. Come on, Nick. Who Come is on. he going to be? He's fighting it's Shavka. It's going to be Shavka. Just grow up. Yeah, he's fighting Shavka this year. <laughs> if he fights Shavka... He could lose the belt. <laughs> so stop bottling it. Say it. Who's your it. pick? Who's your pick? My, my pick's Leon Edwards. Right. So he's going to beat Shavkat. Right. He ain't going to. I don't know whether he's going to fight Shavkat. <laughs> he's going to That's fight Shavkat. Question. I'm telling you now. He's I'll fighting. Tell you now, him. If Leon was scheduled Adams. to fight Shavkat and not Bilal, then yeah. the, then the answer might be different. Right. But there's no Listen, guarantee um, Leon faces Shavkat. Just want to throw it out there right. that your stock in Kazakhstan, Nick, is dropping right now. It's, it's just, just okay. dr- it's plummeting. All those followers, <laughs> all the love, all those little extracurricular opportunities that you get in that part Gone. of the world, they're drying up. Gone. Gone. Passport. Uh, my pick. Renewed. My pick's the exact same pick that I went for last year, Leon Edwards. I think he's in his prime. I think he's I think he's fantastic at the moment. And this could be the year where we get not just two defences, we might even get three. If they're pulling for UFC 300 against Bilal, we're hopefully going to get a home uh, event as well in the middle of the year. I would imagine he would be on that. And then, of course, maybe at the back end of the year, November, you can get him December. out again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of those maybe. is definitely going to be Shavkat. So I'm, I'm out there. He will be the first guy to beat Shavkat. And there might even be another defence in there as well. I'm that confident that Leon Edwards will finish the year still welterweight champion. Leon Edwards, 2024 pick at welterweight for me. Um, up to middleweight boys. Uh, who went first last time? Just, it just was Mike. Like, so lead, Nick, lead the Nick, dance. Nick, you, sorry, mate. Nick, you're up first with middleweights. Yeah, middleweight. Actually, last year, both you guys went for Robert Whittaker. <clears throat> Obviously, mm. I, I'm not going to point fingers. Christ almighty, Sean Strickland's the middleweight champion. Again, no one saw that coming. But last year, I had a feeling this guy was going to go to middleweight and get an opportunity, and he didn't. He did go mm. to middleweight, but he mm. didn't get the opportunity for illness and whatever else. I think this is the year that Hamza Chumayev gets his shot at the middleweight title. Of course, it's not going to be next. I think the title, if I'm all honestly, I think is going to belong to South Africa for a spell. But I think at some point this year, Hamza Chemaev, maybe even Abu Dhabi in October, kids, hmm. will get a shot at middleweight gold and will be the middleweight champion of the world. Yeah, I think it's a really difficult division, this to pick, because I think it's going to change hands on a couple of occasions. I agree with what you just said about maybe the first change. But I think Israel Adesanya is going to come back and do the business this year. Yeah. I think at the end of the year, mm-hmm. Israel Adesanya will have regained the middleweight championship. Especially if Drikas Duplessis beats Sean Strickland. Or even, it doesn't really matter because he's got beef with Sean Strickland and Drikas Duplessis. Either one of those, I think Israel Adesanya will fight him. I think he'll beat them and he'll be the champion at the end of 2024. Do you have something different, Mike? Yeah, I mean, the three top runners are Hamza, Drikas... And Izzy, you know, Izzy comes back. I mean, I assume Drake has probably beat Sean, okay? So he'll be the champion. Does Izzy beat 
Drikas Duplessis? I don't know. Does Izzy get an immediate shot? Maybe he fights Hamzat Chimeyev. Does Hamzat Chimeyev beat mm. Izzy? Stylistically, you can make a case for that. Stylistically, you can make a case that Izzy wins because his takedown defense is great. Uh, so because of all yeah. of that, I'm going to say Drikas. I'm going to say Drikas. Okay. Uh, but Hamzat, Drikas, or Izzy, they're all solid picks. Uh, one thing is, for absolute certain, it's a very exciting division and I can't wait to see how that all plays out. Light heavyweights, speaking of hot potatoes, this could go all over the place. Uh, me, yeah? Well, gentlemen, for the last two years, I've picked the same block and it hasn't materialised. He dropped the ball against Jan Blachowicz uh, in December of 22. Last year, he's had a bit of a year that's gone all over the place a little bit, but I think he's back. I really do think he's back. He's got the bit between his teeth. My pick for the light heavyweight champion come the end of 2024. And this is no easy task because Alex Pereira is absolute mustard and he keeps defying all the odds. But I think Magomed Ankalaev, it will be his year and he will be crown champion. Definitely at some point, And I think he's got enough in the tank to defend again and still be champion come the end of 2024. Mike, where are you going? Yeah, I mean, look, listen, uh, it's a very safe pick. It's a very pedestrian pick. I mean, you look at the guy in the cricket field, the grappling <laughs> credentials, you know Every I mean? time. You, you can just say, yeah. Please he's, tell he's me, like, you're hey, gonna, are you going Anthony Smith again, mate? version of Khabib, and this is number one bull. Uh, but um, <laughs> when you look at light heavyweight, I mean, obviously, Jamal Hill is coming back, right? He's going to be the yes. rightful next contender against Pereira. I when? Think he'll stand. That's the big question. When? When? Yeah, I don't know when. I have no idea. And I'm not just saying that and holding something private. I have no mm. idea. But that's the fight that's going to happen. Outside of that, maybe Israel Adesanya comes back and faces him at 205. You never know because he says he's mm. at the tail end of his career and there's a trilogy there. Uh, I still have Pereira winning that as well. You've got Alexander Rakic, right, who is a bit of a dark horse in the division. Uh, but I still think mm. this time next year, Pereira. I think other than Ankalaev, they're all strikers. Ankalaev could be a real fly in the ointment, but I'm going to stick with Alex Pereira. If Ankalaev gets a shot at Pereira, he wins that fight. Simple as that. But does he get a shot? Do the world's, you know, the, the stars align for that to happen? Oh, I don't know if they do. Yeah. If, if anybody deserves a bit of luck in this weight division, it's probably Ankalaev. You know, that the, the injury against Blahovic, which made him do a lot of laying and praying in that fight with it ending in the draw. And then, of course, the, the phantom flying knee and the weird referee stoppage in Abu Dhabi in the first fight with Johnny Walker. You know, if anyone deserves a little bit of fortune, it's Ankalaev. The sport doesn't work that way, I understand, but I think he's got the kind of all-round tools and the heavy Dagestani grappling game that would cause all kinds of problems for Alex Pereira. So as much as I hate to do it, I'm going to stick with Adam. I chose Ankalaev last year. It didn't happen last year. I'm going to stick with him. This is going to be his year. Yeah, yeah, yeah listen, solid and, and just pick. And this. I fully understand the reasoning, but I just want to say he didn't have bad luck and it wasn't a weird stoppage. He should have been disqualified. He blatantly kneed Johnny Walker <laughs> in the face when he was quite clearly on the ground. You can't get your violin out. I said, oh, poor old Ankalaev isn't yeah, getting his opportunities. Yeah, he blew it. Yeah, He's the, getting a shot. And see, like, well, the doctor Johnny made a ridiculous Walker decision might to win stop this the fight. weekend, guys. Johnny That's Walker right. might Absolutely win. Absolutely, might. And that's kind of lead, lead, lead me in nicely, Mike, to what I want to say. Because if you remember last year, we made this show. Some of us made a certain pick in the heavyweight division. And, and, then, the guy, <laughs> and then the guy left two days after we actually yeah. released the video, which made us look yeah. like a set of prats. So to the audience that are actually tuning into the show, I would just like to point out, we are recording this before part two of Johnny Walker and Anclave. We don't know the results of that particular fight as of yet. It might go the other way. Johnny Walker mm -hmm. might have something to say with the pick on Anclave. But right now we are predicting that Anclave will come through that. And of course, it's before UFC 297. So we don't know the results of those title fights uh, of, uh, of what's going to happen in Toronto. So just, just a little bit of a caveat, which moves us on nicely to the heavyweight division. <laughs> We currently have a situation where there are two belts mm -hmm. floating around. So mm -hmm. we like, are going to like, flag like this me up. me and Nick, uh, two belts. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, which champ. one of you is interim? Real recognize real. Which champ one champs. of you? We're just champ champs. We're just no, no, no. No, you can't have that. Yeah. One singer, <laughs> one song. Mate, you're, you're the so, spit bucket guy. That's all oh, you need to know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, anyway. Guy. Don't try and conquer and divide. First and foremost... Uh, <laughs> Mike, there can be only first. one pick. First and foremost, you can only have one pick. No, you can't. Of course you can. There's only one heavyweight champion. No, 
Incorrect. Well, you can't so add them yeah, up. No. one interim belt in there. No, incorrect. No way. Right no now, way. there are two belts. You've you decided not to answer the question, have you? Is that what you're, is that what you're go deciding? On. Go on, say what you're going to say, and I'll okay. just say no. So as it stands right now, there is a heavyweight champion and an interim champion. <sighs> so my question to you, Michael Bisping, because you're up first, it's your turn. Will there still be an interim champion at the end of 2024? If so, who will it be? Why, well, yes, and I just get the, right to the, the chase. I want of... fluff. I want fill time or, or steal anybody's hair. Go on, Mike. The interim Tell champion him. will be Tom Aspinall and the undisputed champion will be Donny Bones Jones. Simple. Facts. Done. Okay. Sorry. Okay. We don't even... Nick the the fight with Steve cool. Benjamin might not even happen this year. That's true. Might not. That's true. It might not. But you. Do, but your pick is that there will be an interim champion in Tom Aspinall and John Jones will be the heavyweight champion. It'll still Jones be the same situation as what you're saying. Isn't gonna, if he does fight Stipe this year, I don't think he will turn around and fight Tom in 2024. Judging by his uh-huh. tweets recently, he might not even fight again. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's one of those situations. But if they are both still around, they will be the champions, yeah. Okay. Nick, your picks. So okay. just to be clear then, Mike's heavyweight champion end of the year is John Jones, correct? And his interim champion is Tom, Tom Aspinall, no, yes. No, we, we have not no, been asked to provide an interim yes, champion. Yes, we have. Well, well, yes, we have. have. I've provided We've been asked to... I've provided a heavyweight it. champion. I'm looking at it right it. now. I'm just clarifying... I'm just Mine clarifying says, for this time next year, Mike, yeah. Michael Bispin said John Jones will be the heavyweight champion. Done. Fair enough. Right, okay, my turn. And I said the interim. Yeah. I believe Tom but there is an, But there is... But he gets a point for it, right? That's the well, yeah, I was not choosing an interim. So, hold so on, I'm, hold on, hold on. Hold on. so I'm again, that again by definition, Nick, are you saying that Tom's belt doesn't matter? It's immaterial to even not a while John Jones is the disrespect. His belt. The dis- what Tom has right. achieved, not while John Jones is what he did, belt. but we just forget that is what it's an imaginary <laughs> belt. Is what you're saying. You're saying that Tom's belt is a made-up manufactured belt. Say, wow. Can I also just say, right, can I also just say, for the first time in, how many years have we been doing these shows, right? For the first time in six, seven years, that's the first time that our editor's going to have to use a bleep machine on Nick Pete. That's how I rate he just got. I heard it. You slipped it in. I heard it slipping. Anyway, Sunshine, it's your right. turn. Heavyweight yes. situation, what will it yes. be? Yes. And I'm not sitting on the fence with an interim belt. I'm going to go all in. There will only be one heavyweight champion at the end of 2024. His name will be Tom Aspinall. And that will happen one of two ways. Either John Jones will beat Stipe and ride off into the sunset, claiming to the world he's the greatest of all time. And with a lot of people following him and saying, yes, you are. And the belt will be relinquished and Tom Aspinall will be promoted to full champion. Or by... The help of a lot of people sitting in front of these cameras, myself, him, and him, we will finally get John Jones to bite and goad him into a fight with Tom Aspinall. And if that happens, Tom Aspinall beats John Jones. Boom. There you go, kids. There's only one champion, and his name is Tommy Aspinall. Put that interim belt in the bin. Na 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 na. <laughs> Tommy Aspinall. Aspinall. I thought you were going to go full on in there. I tell you what, <laughs> Tales Goodbye. from the Octagon, they were singing that. It was great. You should have been there, lads. <laughs> right, yeah. um, well, listen, Nick, your situation and scenario is obviously ideal, and it's what everybody would love to see. One singer, one song. I've just got a funny feeling that that narrative is just not going to play out this year. We'll get it in 2025, but I think. We, we're not going to see Jones against Aspinall. I think Tom Aspinall will have to defend that belt on a couple of occasions this year. I think he'll be successful. He'll still be the interim champion come the end of 2024. John Jones, I think, will get the fight with Stipe. It will happen maybe in Vegas at, right at the end of the year. And by that time, I think he'll milk it to the point where he won't have reneged. And I think John Jones will still... I think we're going to be in the exact same situation. Jones will be heavyweight champion. Aspinall will be interim champion. And we'll still be having this conversation at this point next year, which is obviously Brilliant. deeply uh, disheartening frustrating. and yep. frustrating. Uh, but that's where we're, where just, we're going to be Just to clarify to the production team then... <sighs> We were not asked for any interim titles. These yeah, we two have both chose we John Jones as the heavyweight champion. I've chosen Tom Aspinall as why, the why heavyweight are you champion. We will be judged Again. on that. 
Well, yeah, and again, though. If there, again, if there is an interim champion, no, 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 if there no, is no, an interim no, no, champion, we're going to play on that as well. No, no, no. Balls, so in your balls. mind, once no, again, you're, re- <laughs> you're reinforcing this narrative that Tom's belt doesn't exist, which I find very yes, it does offensive. exist. Can I? Can, it exists. I'll tell you what. I'll it's run through thing. and drop a little interim belt on every single weight division, shall no. I? Just to have another yeah. extra point in case you don't exist. But if you're wrong, they don't exist. Tom's exists. Tom's belt won't Tom exist will de- this time. Tom will next defend year. the interim belt. He'll be up. He'll have been upgraded. Nick, listen. Well, two John Day Jones, two John Joneses, this... and one Tom Aspinall. Correct. Right. Okay. Let's move on. Hang on. We go with that. the majority. He's picked one. I've picked one. You haven't. Yeah. End of. You've, That's the end of the thing. Jones. I've picked. Just Tom. to finish Fine. off. I've to finish off Tom. a little bit Mine of fun. Mate, Tom. Listen. To finish off, a little bit of fun. Who will be? I know this is dead subjective, and we, we we're kind of spitballing it a little bit. Who will be pound for pound number one male? Who will be pound for pound number one female? Um, I'm going to... I'll I'll throw this out there first. I think the female pound for pound number one will change. Currently, it is Alexa Grasso off the back of her victories against uh, Valentina Shevchenko. I think it'll be Zheng Weili. I think Zheng Weili will be the uh, female pound for pound number one. Uh, and at the end of the year, the male pound for pound number one will be still Islam Makhachev. I think you'll get two solid defences in there. Mike, what do you think? Simple. Yeah, I think when it comes to the men's, Islam Makachev is a solid choice. It's still going to be Islam. You know, it could be Tom Aspinall if he was to get a shot at John Jones, but I don't think mm-hmm. that's going to happen this year if it d- even does ever happen. So I'll say Islam and for the females, for the women, let's have a look. It's Alexa Grasso, Zhang Weili. I think she gets beaten at some point by Tatiana Suarez. And I think Tati, oh, Tatiana, could even go up and beat Alexa Grasso. I say Tatiana Suarez. Oh, what a shout. Wow. What a shout, ladies and gentlemen. Love it. There oh, Tati. you go. Oh, Tati Suarez. There you go. <laughs> oh, Brilliant. Tati Suarez. Uh, there you go. A little bit of fun. I've no doubt the comment section is going to be absolutely rife, ripping into Nick Pete for not picking an interim heavyweight champion. Just wind him up. Get stuck into his social media. You know how to uh, grind his gears. We're all set anyway for a sensational 12 months. It's going to be flip-flopping all over the place. Last year, we heard and knew on 11 different occasions, whether they be full titles, interim titles, or vacant titles. It's probably going to do that exactly again because the UFC provide the best against the best and we've got some stellar weeks as well lined up with UFC 300, International Fight Week with the return of Conor McGregor and various other permutations which will play out at the back end of the year. It's all set to be an absolute cracker on TNT Sports and Discovery+. Plus. We all get underway with the number card of UFC 297, TNT Sports 1. Main card gets going from three with the prelims from one. Make sure you come and join us. There you go, boys. Best of luck to you. Yeah? Hold on to those trophies because I'm coming. See you next time.